That's the attitude of the bride towards the word. Na bagamat hindi natin uh, lubos ang maunawaan kung paano gagawin ng Diyos, sometimes it sounds impossible, but we just say, Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Amen. So before you have your seats, I'd like you to turn your Bible in Luke chapter 9. Praise the Lord. Verse 57. Luke chapter 9, verse 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have, foxes have holes, and, the bir and birds of the air have nest, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Praise God. Tayo sa mandaling manalangin. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your divine presence in this place. Truly, Father, that you keep your promise. The two or three gathered in your name, you are in the midst of us. Lord, we come here expecting. And we know that we will receive from you because you have something for us today. I believe, Lord, that your presence is not unrecognized in this place. So I pray that you would meet the needs of each one of us. I pray, Father, that you would speak expressly to us something, Lord, that would draw us closer to you something lord that would make us that would that would make ourselves available to you something something lord that would motivate us to walk in obedience to your will for us i pray lord that you would bless your children i pray that you would nourish once again our soul Bless your people, not just in this building, but those who are watching uh, online and even those who would watch this message, this record, the recorded message of this service. We pray, Lord, for your divine blessing upon, upon each one of us. We pray for your divine leading on all the things that are to be said. We commit the rest of the service into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Alagpakan natin ang Panginoon. Amen. Purihin ang Panginoon. The Lord is good. Amen. And His mercy endureth forever. So just to remind us, our uh, uh, service starts at 9.30. I, I have instructed... Uh, the MC and the musicians to start at exactly 9.30. And para masanay tayo na we have to come on time. 
Because we don't want to miss yung para sa Panginoon. Because this word is for you, but worship is for God. Amen. And we don't just come here to be blessed by God. We come here to bless Him. So we don't come here empty-handed. Kinakailangan kapag tayo dumako sa bahay sambahan ng Panginoon, meron tayong iaalay sa Kanya. That's why the Bible said, I will enter His gates with thanksgiving, and I will enter His courts with praise. That's the protocol in coming to the presence of God. Amen. Purihin ng Panginoon. The Lord has been so good to us. Mm. And I think we, we, we have a visitor. Sabi ni Brother Edgar sa akin. Nandito ba si uh, Brother Joseph? Uh, God bless you. Uh, kasama niya si uh, Brother Peter, also a minister in this message. Uh, I think he, he was uh, he is pastoring sa lugar sa Cagayan. Amen. So, uh, are we ready for the Word of God? Yes. Alam niyo, two Fridays ago, uh, nang nangaral si Brother Floor, you know, this scripture came to me. And uh, after he preached, I uh, dinaanan ko uh, itong uh, Luke 9 verse 62. But actually, there are more scriptures coming to me <laughs> at that time. Even when uh, after I, uh, I made a comment on this scripture, uh, pinaawit ko li yung song leader, habang nandyan ako, uh, you know, some scriptures are dropping. And uh, so after the end of the, uh, the songs, I, I grabbed my phone, I wrote those things na itinadrop ng Panginoon sa akin. So, after the service, nilapitan ko si Father Flor. Nagsabi ko sa kanya, magandang magturo ah. Ang title, Don't Look Back. Don't Look Back. So, yan ang title ko ngayon. Don't Look Back. Don't Look Back. Amen. So, uh, sometimes it's strange, you know, that God would uh, drop some thoughts for you to preach many days before you preach it. Because, you know, the, these things were given to me by God, you know, uh, two weeks ago. So I just wrote this scripture at binalikan ko kahapon yung mga nilagay ko sa phone ko. And sometimes God give a message a day before you preach. <laughs> So God is sovereign. Sometimes He would like to teach His servants not to worry about the message to preach. Because once God called you, God has to give you a message. Amen. Amen. Kahit pa wala pang message sa Friday, kung ikaw ay magtuturo ng linggo, meron at meron siyang ibibigay. Amen. And that is what I've learned, you know, as a minister. And even sometimes, if I didn't have much time on Saturday, I would just sleep and wake up early in the morning because I believe that it's not based on my ability. It's not based on my knowledge, but it's based on the wisdom of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So we are not depending on human energy or human ability. We are very dependent on uh, the Holy Spirit. Don't look back. Pagkat ang sabi dito sa verse 62 ni Jesus Christ, And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow. Ang isang uh, nag-aararo kapag nilagay niya ng kanyang kamay sa plow or plowshare. And looking back, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. No man, having put his hand on the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, once you put your hand on the plow, you shouldn't look back. And I'm taking my inspiration here. So my message is, don't look back. 
Dito sa ating binasa, we could see here stories of people who want so much to follow Jesus, but somehow they can't pay the price. Dito sa verse 57, ang sabi dito, And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Look at this man. He's making a commitment. He was telling Jesus, Panginoon, saan ka magpunta? Susundan kita. And how many people have we heard utter similar words? Panginoon, saan ka man pupunta? Susunod ako sa iyo. And sometimes people, they make rash commitments. Not counting the cost ng kanilang sinasabi. Susumagot ang Panginoon. Because this person was saying, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Maral ito ay, uh, uh, maybe this is a, a burst of seal, or maybe he becomes so enthusiastic dahil sa mga nakita niyang himala na ginawa ng Panginoon. Because of the great signs and wonders, because of the fame of Jesus. Kaya sabi niya dito, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. At sumagot ang Panginoon, and Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Mabuti pa mga foxes. Meron silang holes, doon sila nananahan. Okay, they make holes to live there. Uh, doon nila tinatago ang kanilang mga anak to protect them from uh, the predator. Foxes have holes. Ang mga birds, meron silang nest na pinaglalagyan sa kanilang mga itlog, sa kanilang mga uh, sisiw, na kanilang pinanahanan o lugar na kanilang pahingahan. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Why? Because God has become poor that we may become rich. Are you catching that? Not rich naturally, but rich spiritually. So, nakita natin, pinapakita ni Jesus Christ. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you serious of what you're saying? Na kung saan man ako pumunta, ay susundan mo ako? At sinasabi ko sa iyo, wala akong sariling tahanan. Mabuti pa mga foxes, meron silang tahanan. Mabuti pa mga ibon, meron silang nest. But the son of man ay walang paglagyan ng kanyang ulo. In other words, if you really want to follow me, wheresoever I go, you must be willing to sacrifice. Because following Jesus requires a sacrifice. Hindi madaling sumunod kay Kristo. Meron kang sakripisyo na gagawin para makasunod sa Kanya. Hindi ibig sabihin na kapag sumunod kay kay Kristo, everything will go out fine. Everything will run smooth. No. Sometimes you have to pass through bumpy places. Sometimes you have to go rough places. Sometimes you have to climb the mountain. Sometimes you have to cross the river. Merong hardship, merong sacrifice. In other words, if you want to follow Jesus Christ, you must be willing to pay the price because there is a cost in following Jesus. And in verse 59, And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Now look at this. Sabi naman ni Jesus Christ sa isa, Follow me. Pero sumagot siya, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Now, hindi ibig sabihin niya na <laughs> ayaw ng Panginoon na umaten siya sa funeral ng kanyang ama. And because that, that doesn't mean napatay na yung kanyang tatay. 
It only means na, Lord, hintayin ko munang mamatay ang aking tatay and I bury him, then I will follow you. Sabi niya dito, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. You know, some people, when God makes a demand from them, it shows that following Jesus is not a priority for them. Why? Because it's showing you here a misplaced priority. How many Christians have you heard, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first. In other words, they put Christ as a second priority. Susunod ako, pero gawin ko muna ito, Panginoon. Susunod ako, pero gawin ko muna ito. Why? Because itong pangalawang taong ito, Amen, he was commissioned for a ministerial work. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, go and preach the kingdom of God. Pero anong sabi niya, mga kapatid? Sabi niya, yes, I will do that. Nais mo akong mangaral, pero Lord, I have to do this first. Then I will follow you. Mga kapatid, if you want to follow Jesus, put Him as the top priority. <laughs> Dahil kung nga, kung si Jesus Christ ay hindi mo priority, you could not have a full commitment sa ministry. In other words, if you want to follow Jesus, make Him your priority. He is your first. Make Jesus first, others second, and put yourself at the bottom. Now, this is a misplaced priority. Pero ang sabi ni Jesus Christ, let the, let the dead bury the dead. Now, we should... Is, we should know how Jesus speaks. We should understand His language. Let the bury, let the dead bury the dead. <laughs> Why? Because in the scripture, a sinner is counted as dead. And that ungodly persons, even while they are alive, are considered dead. Kaya nga sa ibang translation, is spiritually dead. Nag-ibig sabihin, there are enough people to take care sa bagay na masyado mong iniisip kaya hindi mo ako masunod. Let those sinners do it. In other words, there was no need why you should neglect the ministry of the gospel to attend to that. But ought to leave it to persons who were fitter for it. Ibig sabihin, walang dahilan para hindi mo, para ineglect mo. Yung ipinapagawa ko sa'yo. To neglect the ministry of the gospel pagkat meron mga tao na pwedeng gumawa niyan. Now, look at this. Jesus Christ was showing here that when you follow Him, He must be your top priority. You could not put Jesus the second place. Now, verse 61. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first go and but let me first go bid them farewell which are at home. At my house. <laughs> Look at this again. This is another person. He was expressing his willingness to follow Jesus. Pero meron siyang but. <laughs> you see that? Ilang beses ka na nakarinig ng tao, Lord, mo, I want to follow Jesus, but, I want to follow Jesus, but, Meron silang dahilan. Gusto ko muna ma-accomplish ito bago, bago ko sundin yung pinapagawa ng Panginoon sa akin. Sabi niya, Lord, I will follow the but Let me first go bid them farewell which are at home at my house. Gusto kitang sundin. Pero, ngunit, hayaan mo muna ako magpaalam sa aking mga pamilya. 
Now, Jesus knows the heart of the person. Jesus knows the, the, res, the, the result of what he was trying to do. Gusto niyo muna magpaalam. But Jesus understand the pressure in the family. Nakuha natin. Kapag maray kapag siya'y nagpaalam, maray sabi ng kanyang tatay, I think that is not a good idea. May mga bagay na isa-sacrifice ka. And sometimes, yung akala mo na mag encourage sa sa'yo, sila pa yung pipigil sa'yo. Kinakailangan pa magpaalam, paano kung hindi siya pinayagan ng kanyang magulang? Paano kung uh, pinigilan siya ng kanyang mga kapatid? Kaya sumagot si Jesus Christ sa verse 62, And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Walang mag-aararo na kapag nilagay niya kanyang kamay sa plow ay titingin sa likod. Amen. Walang klaseng taong ganoon na fit for the kingdom of God. Why? Now, can you can you show that picture? Uh, ito yun yung tukoy ni Jesus Christ. Walang plow man na kapag nilagay niya yung kanya kamay doon sa plowshare ay lilingon sa likod. Why? Because a plow man looking back cuts a crooked furrow. Kapag siya ay lumingon, hindi straight yung kanyang Linya na ginagawa, yung kanyang pagsasaka. Maging sigsag yun. In other words, he cannot do his work well. Kapag siya'y lilingon pabalik, hindi niya magagawa yung kanyang, yung kanyang ginagawa ng maayos. He cannot rightly perform the work of the ministry. While his thoughts and time are taken up with the affairs of the world. Sinasabi ko sa inyo, you, could not, you cannot look back and be committed to Christ. Kaya may mga tao na hindi nila magawa ng maayos ang pinapagawa ng Panginoon sa kanila because they are looking back. Sometimes they want to enter a ministry pero hindi nila magampanan ng maayos. Why? Pagkat hindi sila focus doon sa pinapagawa ng Panginoon sa kanila. There are things that is distracting them. They are looking back. But brothers and sisters, keep your eyes from someone else but Jesus. Hallelujah! Kaya may mga tao walang commitment sa pinapagawa ng Panginoon sa kanila. May mga tao na walang commitment sa kanilang ministry. Why? Because they try to put their hand on the plowshare but looking back. Pero nice ng Panginoon when you decided na maglingkod sa kanila. No turning back. No looking back. Tulad ng sabi ng awit, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Never enter a ministry if you are looking back because you are not fit for the kingdom. Now look at this. You could not look back and be committed to Christ. Keep your eyes from someone else but Jesus. Without looking back. Now with our focus on Jesus, we should not allow anything to distract us from following Him. Maraming pwede maging distraction sa iyo sa pagsunod sa Kanya. But you should not allow those things to distract you. Amen. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on the Word of God. Be a prisoner to His revealed Word. Kung ano ang pinapagawa sa iyo ng Panginoon. Amen. Ayun ang tingnan mo. Ayun ang sikapin mo ma-accomplish mga kapatid. Don't look back. Don't get back. Don't look back. So what does Jesus want from us? What does Jesus want from us? Total dedication. 
not half-hearted commitment. Diba? Bakit ko sinasabi yan? Because I've seen people do that. They want to put their hand on the plowshare. They want to put their hand on the ministry, but they keep looking back. Kaya isang buwan, masyado silang enthusiastic. Laging nandiyan, masipag. After a month or so, nawawala na naman. Why? Because there is no commitment. Diba? There is no total dedication. It's just a half-hearted commitment. But if you are going to follow Jesus, remember Jesus first. Others second, yourself at the bottom. I'd like to show you an example here sa book of Ruth. Nang si Naomi ay nagdesisyon na nga bumalik sa kanyang lupain. Namatay na ang kanyang asawa na si Elimelech. At ang kanyang dalawang anak na si Malon at Kilion na nakapag-asawa sa Moab. Siya na ngayon ay nagdesisyon na umuwi. At ang kanyang two daughters-in-law na si Orpa at si Ruth, sumama sa kanya pabalik sa Bethlehem. Sa kanyang pagbalik sa Bethlehem. Pero tingnan natin ang kwento. Dito sa Ruth chapter 1 verse 7. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. So hindi mag-isa si Ruth sa kanyang pagbalik, kasama niya si Orpa, at kasama niya si Ruth. Ibig sabihin, sasama sila sa kanyang pupuntahan. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as she have dealt with the dead and with me. Bumalik na kayo sa inyong mother's house. Okay, may the Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt, as ye have dealt with the dead, kanila mga husbands, and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest. Yung rest dyan, it's marriage. Na, na why, grant ng Panginoon na makapag-asawa pa kayo kasi naging balo sila. Each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them and they lifted up their voice and wept. So hinalikan nila. Ay, hinalikan ni Naomi sila. At nag si Orpa at si Ruth. At sumagot sila, and they said unto her, Surely, we will return with thee unto thy people. Hindi ka namin pwedeng iwanan, Naomi. Mama, hindi ka namin pwedeng iwanan. Sabi na, surely, hindi maybe, surely, we will return with thee unto thy people. Now, it's not just Ruth saying that, it's also Orpah. Umiyak pa sila. Verse 11, And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Ba't niyo ba ako, ba't pa kayo sasama sa akin? Makapagsisilang pa ba ako ng anak na para mapangasawa niyo? Turn again, my daughters. Go your way. For I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should say, if I should have a husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they have they were grown? Would ye stay for the? Uh, would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughter, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. Sabi na, huwag na kayo sumama. Matanda na ako para magkaroon ng anak. At sabi natin, makapag-asawa pa ako magkaroon ako ng anak. Although matanda na ako, malabo lang mangyari yun. Could you refuse yourself from getting married at hihintayin niyo yung 
magiging anak ko na lumaki para mapangasawa niyo. Why, pagkat sa Israel ay merong law. Na kapag ikaw, ako, uh, na kapag ikaw ay uh, nag-asawa, yung lalaki ay nag-asawa ng babae, at namatay yung lalaki na hindi niya nabibigyan ng anak yung babae, yung brother niya is under obligation to raise up a seed for the deceased brother. Kinakailangan asawahin niya yun. Na yung kanilang unang magiging anak, okay, it will be considered na anak ng namatay niyang asawa. Sabi niya, matanda na ako. Ay kung ako yung mga anak, hihintayin niyo pa ba na lumaki yan? Para mapangasawa niyo? What was this? Naomi was showing them the consequence of following her. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. Now look at this. Nang nakita yun ni Orpah, anong sabi nito? Kani na umiyak siya. Sabi niya, bumalik na kayo. Sabi ni Orpah at si Ruth, hindi kami, ha? hindi ka namin niiwan. Sasaba kayo. Kasaba kami. Kung merong panahon na dapat tutulungan ka namin, it is this time because this is the time that you needed us the most. Namatay na yung asawa, namatay na yung dalawang anak, hindi ka namin iiwan, sasama kami sa iyo. But when Naomi was showing, you know, the consequence, ano nga ginawa ni Orpa dito? Ang sabi dito, Amen. And they lifted up their voice and wept again, and Orpa kissed her mother-in-law. And Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Humalik si Orpa at bumalik na. She is gone back unto her people, not just unto her people, but unto her gods, the gods of the Moab. Bumalik siya sa false religion. Bumalik siya sa false worship. Do you see that? Nakakita na kayo ng mga tao na sabi na, Panginoon, susunod kami sa iyo. Saan ka man pumunta? Susunod kami sa iyo. But after a while, nang nakita nila ang consequence of following the Lord, mamaya-maya, nawawala na sila. Why? Because that's not real faith. They were just carried by their emotions. Marami mga tao kanya mga kapatid, umiiyak pa ang Panginoon. Hindi kita iiwan kung saan ka matutungo, susunod ako sa iyo, ano bang ipagawa mo? They're even crying saying that. Not a dried eye, pero umiyak pa sila. It looks they're very sincere, but they were just carried by their emotion. Amen. But when the amen, but when the condition of life changes, yung kanilang binitawan sa Panginoon na sila ay susunod, wala na sila. Pero mga kapatid si Ruth. Amen. Amen. Him, she made already a clear-cut decision. Amen. She know she did not turn back. She did not look back. Ang sabi dito, but Ruth clave unto her. At sabi sa verse 15, ang sabi ni Naomi, tinan mo ang iyong sister-in-law. She has gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Sumagot si Ruth. And Ruth, sir, and Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whithersoever thou goest, I will go. For where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but that part thee and me. Look at this. Ayun ang pinakaibahan ni Ruth kay Orpa. Si Orpa, yung kanyang decision could easily change because of the circumstance. Pero mga kabatid, amen si Ruth nang siya'y nag-desisyon. It's already a clear-cut decision. Walang bagay na pwedeng makapagbago. 
Naomi, kahit anong sabihin mo, hindi na magbabago yung decision ko. Wheresoever you go, I will go. Wheresoever you latch, I will latch. Why? Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Naalala mo, Naomi, yung kinikwento mo sa akin about Abraham, about si about kay Moses. Nakita ko na ang Diyos ng Israel ang tunay na Diyos. Ang Diyos na Moab ay di tunay na Diyos. Ang reliyon sa Moab, it's a false religion. Kaya hindi ako sumasama sa iyo dahil naawa lang ako pagkat alam ko na ang Diyos na sinasamba mo, siya ang tunay na Diyos. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. In the good times, in the bad times, hindi kita iiwan. Mga kapatid, ganyan ang nice ng Diyos kapag tayo sumunod sa Kanya. Amen. Hindi tayo matitinag ng kondisyon sa buhay. Hindi tayo matitinag ng kahirapan. Hindi magbabago yung decision mo dahil may malaki kang problema. Amen. Nang sinabi mo sa Panginoon, Panginoon, susunod ako sa iyo. May problema man o wala, susunod ako sa iyo. May pera man o wala, susunod ako sa iyo. Because it's a clear-cut decision. Walang pwedeng magpapagbago ng decision ko. Maging magulang ko, hindi pwedeng baguhin ang decision ko. Maging ang kaibigan ko, hindi pwedeng baguhin ang decision ko. Maging kahirapan man, hindi pwedeng baguhin ang decision ko. Why? Because that's a clear-cut decision. Or pa look back, but Ruth did not look back. He moved forward with Naomi. At ganyan ang pagsunod sa Panginoon. Hindi yung iiyak-iyak ka lang sa altar. Panginoon, susunod ako. Ah, pero kapag dumating yung pagsubok, nawawala ka. Hindi kanya ang hinahanap ng Panginoon. Ang tunay na nanampalataya, ang tunay na nagmamahal sa Panginoon, susunod yan sa Panginoon. Ano mang kalagayan na buhay, nahihirapan mo yan, nagpapatuloy pa rin. It's a clear-cut decision. Kung lahat tayo, mga kabatid, have made that clear-cut decision, there is no room for backsliding. There is no room para kay kayo manghina. There is no room para iwanan mo ang ministry. Why? Because you have made a clear-cut decision. You are dedicated to the work of God. Hallelujah! Because you have made your decision. Hallelujah! Oh, look at this. Nothing can hold me. Nothing can hinder me in following you. Ano kaya sometimes? Hindi ako nadadala ng iyak ng tao eh. Kasi marami na ako na ganyan, umiiyak. Di ba? Kasi nawawala. Di ba? Yung misa, iiyak pagkausap mo. Mahal nilang Panginoon. Mamaya, wala na naman. Hindi, mga kabatid. This is beyond emotion. This is beyond emotion. Pagkat kapag ang tao na emotion, sabi niya, Panginoon, paglilikuran kita, hindi kita tatalikuran. Now, your emotion can, can, can make you speak like that. Pero iba pag nanggaling sa pananampalataya. Amen. Why? Because faith is beyond emotion. Saan ba nilagay ng, ng prophet yung faith? Hindi sa spirit. Yung affection mo, which is the seat of your emotion, nandoon sa spirit realm. Amen. Pero yung faith, mga kapatid, hallelujah, yung faith nandoon sa soul. That's why yung faith, mga kapatid, it's not affected by your conditions. It's not affected by your circumstance. Because we don't live by emotion, we live by faith. Hallelujah. Meron panahon na, na ang emotion mo, sinasabi niya, huwag kang manalangin. Parang yung emotion mo, sabi niya, ayaw manalangin. Pero bakit ka pa rin nananalangin? Amen. May mga panahon, sabi niya, huwag ka nang dumalo ng midweeks, pagod ka na sa trabaho. Pero bakit ka pa rin dumadalo? Why? Because you are not moved by your emotion. Alam mo ang sinabi sa Hebrews, not forsaking the assembling together, especially as we see the day approaching. Hallelujah! 
you don't want to forsake the gathering because you see the value of the day approaching because this message is to prepare you for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Not all tears mean there is faith. Diba? But there are real, there are good emotions, mga kapatid, if it's mixed with faith. Amen. That's the kind of emotion that we want. It's mixed with faith. Amen. Pagkat yung emotion na yun, it comes from the conviction of the Holy Ghost. You get convicted and that conviction becomes a revelation. And once it becomes a revelation, brothers and sisters, hindi ka matinag ng kaaway. Hindi ka mahila pabalik ng kaaway. Why? Because it's already a revelation. Praise God. Orpha look back. She get back to her people and her gods. Not so with Ruth. Because Ruth is a type of the true believer. Now look at the children of Israel. Nilabas sila ng Panginoon sa Egypt with His great mighty hand. Why? Because they are being maltreated in Egypt. Pinahirapan sila ng kanilang mga taasmasters until they cried out to God and the Lord heard their cry and God sent Moses to deliver them out of that bondage. Out of that slavery. To deliver them sa kalupitan ng kanilang mga taasmasters. But look at here in Numbers 14. Matapos mag-send ng 12 spies doon sa land of Canaan. And when they got back, the 10 spies gave a bad report. But Joshua and Caleb gave a good report. At imbis na ang panigan ng uh, mga Israelites yung good report because it's in accordance to the word of God. It's in accordance to the promise of God ang pinangkinggan nila. Yung mga ten spies. Sabi nila, hindi natin kaya yung mga tao doon. Masyado silang malakas para sa atin. Para lang tayo mga tipaklong. Pero sabi sa Bible, but Caleb is still the people. Amen. Sabi niya, let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. Why? Because Caleb was looking at the promise. Was looking at the words of God. Numbers 14 verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. That was their reaction. Dapat maging masaya na sila kasi dapat papasok na sila sa lupain. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. But because of the bad report, because of that evil report, look how, how it affected the behavior of the people. They were crying, weeping all night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in this wilderness? Mabuti nang namatay kami sa Egypt o namatay kami sa wilderness. And wherefore had, and wherefore had the Lord brought us Unto this land to fall by the sword? Tadaling kami na pa, kami na pagro sa lupain para mamatay kami sa digman. That our wives and our children should be a prey. 
were it not better for us to return into Egypt? What were they doing? They were looking back to Egypt. Hindi ba mas maganda na bumalik na lang kami sa Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Now look at this. These are people that were brought out of Egypt. Pero nung nakita nila yung mga obstacles, yung, ha, yung mga is, na kanila, na, napakinggan nila yung report patungkol sa mga stronghold ng inhabitants sa land of Canaan. Anong nangyari mga kapatid? Imbis na ipaglaban nila o paninindigan nila ang pangako ng Panginoon, they want to return back to Egypt. Ito yung mga tao, when they saw the obstacles, they want to return back. Why? Because they couldn't believe the promise. And because they look back, anong ginawa ng Panginoon sa kanila? God destroyed them all in the wilderness. Out of that old generation, tinira lamang ng Panginoon si Caleb at si Joshua pagkat sila ang totoong naniniwala sa pangako. Kaya nung sabi ng Panginoon dito, sa ver, uh, maganda siguro ituloy na natin. Sabi sa verse 4, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. And Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which, uh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed through to search it, it's an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then He will bring us into this land and give it us. A land which floweth, floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land. Huwag niyong katakutan yung mga tao sa land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Look at the attitude of Joshua and Caleb. Why? Because they are looking on the promise. Amen. Amen. Parehas lang ang land na inispiyan nila doon sa ten spies. Nakita rin nila yung nakita ng ten spies. But their eyes is fixed on the promise that God has already given them that land. Verse 10, But all the congregation bade is stone them with stones. Kung sino pa yung nangangaral ng tama gustong batuhin? <laughs> Di ba? Kung sino yung mga negative, sila yung pinaniniwalaan. Pero yung nangangaral, nagsinabi ng Panginoon, yung nangangaral, paninindigan sa sinabi ng Diyos, gusto pang batuhin. <laughs> and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. Look at verse 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people provoke me? And how long will it be here before they believe me? How long will it be before they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them. You mean to say, gusto nilang bumalik? They couldn't believe the promise. With all the signs that I have showed among them. Napakaraming milagro na ginawa ko sa kanila. By my great mighty hand, I have broken the power of Egypt to deliver them out from bondage.
Nang dumating yung death angel, I protected them from that. I made a provision for them. That they have to kill a Passover lamb and apply the blood para hindi sila tamaan ng death angel. I have done so much for them. Ganyan ang tao. Kapag nakita yung mga malalaking challenges, naiisip bumalik sa kanilang pinanggalingan. Mga kapatid, kung binubulong niya ng kaaway sa iyo, nais kong sabihin sa iyo, naalala mo ba ang mga milagro na ginawa ng Diyos sa buhay mo? Marahil dati kang addict, but the Lord delivered you from addiction. Dati kang bihag ng kasalanan. Amen. Sugarol ka dati. Babaero ka dati. Pero pinalaya ka ng Panginoon sa mga bagay na yan. Ngayon, nakita mo lang yung mga giants, yung mga challenges sa buhay mo. Gusto mong bumalik. Gusto mo bang kalimutan ang ginawa ng Panginoon sa iyo? Mga batid, the Lord has done so much in our life. Marami, marami dito dati adik sa droga. Marami dito dati lasinggero. Pero pinalaya kayo sa bihag ng mga bisyong yan. Pinalaya dati, mga kapatid, wala kayong kapayapaan. Dati labas-pasok kayo sa bilangguan. Amen. Sinubukan mo lahat ng mga bagay sa mundo pero walang kasiyahan doon. Pero dahil sa pag-ibig ng Diyos, Amen, nilabas ka niya sa ganung kondisyon ng buhay. Ngayon, merong konting problema. Gusto mong bumalik. Nakalimutan mo na ba ang ginawa ng Diyos sa'yo? May mga panahon na dapat namatay ka na pero iningatan ka ng Panginoon. Amen. God is stood between you and death. Why? Amen. Pagkada ayaw ng Panginoon at that time mamamatay ka na. Amen. Dapat na disgrasya ka na. Dahil na palo, dahil dapat sana nang na-involve ka sa rayot, nasaksakat na matay ka na, pero protectionan ka pa rin ng Panginoon. Have you seen the hand of God? Mga kapatid, kung nakita mo yan, meron kang sapat na dahilan para hindi tumalikod. Meron kang sapat na dahilan para magpatuloy pagkat nakita mo ang biyaya ng Diyos. Nakita mo ang pag-ibig ng Diyos. Nakita mo ang milagro ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Look at how rebellious these people. How stubborn these people. They want to get back to Egypt. You see that? Do you realize? Kung anong ibig sabihin na kanilang sinasabi dito, sabi niya, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Returning back to Egypt means rejecting God's leadership. Why? Because it was the pillar of fire that brought them out of Egypt. It was the pillar of fire that led them to Mount Sinai. It was the pillar of fire that is leading them in the wilderness. And to get back, that, and to, get back to Egypt is to reject the leadership of God. Getting back to Egypt means rejecting God's promise. Because God's promise is not in Egypt. God's promise is in Canaan. So going back to Egypt means you are rejecting God's promise because you don't have faith to believe. For you, it doesn't matter about the promise. Parang namang hindi namang gagawin ng Diyos. Parang hirap pangyari yan. Mabuti nang bumalik ako sa Egypt. Getting back to Egypt means rejecting freedom. Why? Pagkat nang nandoon sila sa Egypt, they were slave. They were in bondage. Pinahirapan sila. At kahit anong gawin niya, they could not get out or break the power of Egypt because the power of Egypt is stronger than uh, than their power, their strength. Kaya, for God to deliver them, it must be a supernatural hand of God. 
and getting back to Egypt means rejecting your freedom. Have you realized that? These are people who want to look back. They want to get back to Egypt. They have rejected God's leadership. They have rejected God's promise. They have rejected God's freedom. Now, how often we see people fall away when things get hard. Have you seen people like that? How many so-called message believers fall away when things get hard? Now look at what Stephen says here sa kanyang pangangaral sa Book of Acts. Acts chapter 7. Tingnan natin yung uh, bahagyang pangaral ni Stephen. Acts chapter 7, verse 37. Sabi dito, this is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear. This is he, referring to Moses, that was in the church in the wilderness. With the angel which he spake to him, in the Mount Sinai. So who spoke at the Mount Sinai, it was an angel. At anong sabi ng angel? I am the God of Moses. I am the God, I say, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Sabi niya kay Moses. So we know this angel is the uh, theophany of God. With the angel which speak to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. To whom our fathers would not obey. In other words, their fathers. Itong tinatalakay natin. Did not obey Moses. To whom our fathers would not obey. But trust him from them. At anong sabi ta? And in their hearts, turn back again into Egypt. Now look at this one. Israel did not go back to Egypt in a physical or material sense. But in their hearts, they went back to Egypt many, many times. Nilabas sila ng Panginoon sa Egypt, pero ang puso nila, uh, nila nandun pa sa Egypt. They came out of Egypt, but there are a lot of Egypt in them. Do you see that? Hindi lang doon sa binasa natin sa numbers. Gusto nilang bumalik sa Egypt. Now, tinan nyo nga dito mga kapatid. I'll give you one more example. Dito, Exodus 16. Nang sila'y walang makain. Exodus 16, verse 1. And they took their journey from Elim, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came between Elim and Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. Now they left Egypt on the fifteenth day of the first month, which is Abib. So ito lang one month. Palang sila kalalabas sa Egypt. At sabi sa verse 2, And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full? 
For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Nang napunta sila sa lugar na walang makainan. Now, ito pa lang one month. Siguro, naubos na yung dala nila kasi nang lumabas sila, meron sila mga binaon mula di sa Egypt. At nang wala na silang makain, they started to murmur. They started to complain against Moses and Aaron. Mabuti nang doon na kami namatay sa Egypt. What was that? Wala na sila sa Egypt, but they are looking back to Egypt. Na kung saan, kumakain kami by the flesh pots at nakakain namin yung gusto namin at nabubusog kami. Na-imagine nila yung pagkain sa Egypt. At dito wala kami makain. Mabuti na hindi na kami lumabas sa Egypt. Now look at the attitude of these people. When problem comes, they look back to Egypt. I repeat, when problem comes, they look, uh, they look back to Egypt. Why? Because they have not learned to trust God. My problem, gusto nilang bumalik sa Egypt because they never learned to trust God. Mabuti pa sa Egypt, maraming pagkain dito, mamamatay kami sa gutom. So they remembered what Egypt had to offer them. Doon sa Egypt, meron kami mga, mga, mga flesh pots. Kumakain kami to the full. Kakain kami ng uh, gusto namin kainin. Oh, pero dito wala kaming makain. Imbes na magtiwala sila sa Panginoon na para mag-provide sa dami ng milagro na nakita nila. Nagko-complain sila at anong ginawa nila? When problem arises, they look back to Egypt. Now, I warn every one of you, mga kapatid, kung merong dumating na problema sa inyong buhay, huwag na huwag kayong titingin pabalik. Huwag na huwag kayong titingin pabalik. Pagka dito mga taong ito, iniisip nila, oh, ganito ang buhay namin sa Egypt. Kahit kayong mga young people, kahit kayong mga sister, kahit may persecution kayo, kahit may problema kayo, huwag niyong isipin na bumalik sa Egypt. Huwag niyong isipin, oh, mabuti pa nang ako'y nasa Egypt, pwede kong isuot kung anong damit na gusto ko. Pwede akong mag-miniskort, pwede akong magpantalon, pwede akong maghikaw, pwede akong mag-makeup. Pwede kong putulin yung buko, ko, mabuti pa doon, walang nagbabawal. Pero ngayon ang daming mga dapat hindi gawin. Ah. Mabuti pang bumalik ako sa Egypt. Mga kapatid, huwag mong isipin yan. Si Satanas ang bumubulong sa'yo yan. Kahit may problema ka, huwag kang titingin babalik sa Egypt. Pagkat sa Egypt, alipin ang buhay mo. Bihag ka ng kasalanan, pero pinalaya ka ng Panginoon. Mabuti pa sa Egypt. Hallelujah. Sabi, mabuti pa sa Egypt. Hindi ko kinakailangan mag-ikapu sa Egypt. Hindi ko kinakailangan mag-offering. Pero ngayon dito sa message, kinakailangan ko mag magbigay ng handog ko, sayang pang shopping ko na lang. Mga kapatid, amen, kapag sumunod ka sa Panginoon, huwag kang maghinayang. Tuloy-tuloy ka lang kapatid. Huwag kang lilingon pabalik. No one, no man that put his hand on the plow and look back is fit for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah! Nahirapan na ako, tinatawanan na ako ng mga ka-office mo ko dahil sa ayos ko, dahil sa buho ko. Balik na lang ako sa Egypt. Mabuti pa sa Egypt. Amen. Kahit anong hairstyle ko nagagawa ko. Pero ngayon, hirap na hirap na ako. Makapal pa man din yung buho ko. Mga kapatid, huwag kang bumalik sa Egypt. Huwag kang titingin. Hallelujah! Sabihin mo yung awit. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Amen. Why? Because you have made a clear-cut decision like Ruth. 
Hey man, hindi na ako babalik. Kung anong nais ipagawa ng Diyos sa akin, gagawin ko. Hallelujah! Hey man, ano magsabihin ng kaklase ko sa school? Ano magsabihin ng office mate ko sa school? Hey Amen. I don't care about their opinion of me. What I care about is God's opinion of me. Ano man ang sabihin nila, okay lang. Huwag ko lamang sakta ng Diyos. Amen. Ano bang sabihin nila, okay lang. Amen. Maplease ko lamang ang Diyos. Mapasaya ko lamang ang Panginoon. Pero maraming tao na ganyan. Mabigat na problema. Tumitingin na patalibot. Now, ito mga taong ito, hindi talaga nakabalik sa Egypt. But they were judged by God in the wilderness because of their unbelief. Pero ang puso nila ilang beses bumabalik sa Egypt. Nakuha niyo mga kapatid. Don't look back. Don't look back. Now, look at the writing of the Apostle Paul in the book of Hebrews. Now, if, if you don't know the background, okay, when was the book of Hebrews written, and uh, kung kanino sinulat yon, you would not grasp much yung writing ni Apostle Paul. Para maunawaan mo yung uh, writing ni Apostle Paul, you have to study the condition at that time when that letter was written. Because just during those times, Christians were being persecuted. Although hindi pa talaga yung uh, uh, minamartyr in the sense na talagang uh, ganun ang ginagawa sa kanila. But their, their, their property are being confiscated. Their property are being vandalized. They are being imprisoned. Nagawa natin? That was the condition. Maybe we could uh, uh, read a part of uh, the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13 verse 3. Anong sabi dyan? Remember them that are in bands as bound with them. Yung bands dyan, remember them that are in prisons. Because many of those Christians were in prison. Not because they were criminals, but because they stood for the gospel. Because of their faith in Jesus, they were in prison. Kaya sabi ni Paul dito, remember them that are in bands as bound with them. Alalahan nyo sila na para bagang kayo rin yung binalinggo. And them which suffer adversity. Why? Because it was a time of persecution. A time of suffering. As being yourself also in, that body, in the body. Na para bagang ginawa sa inyong katawan nyo. At dito sa verse 23, it also shows us na si Timothy ay nakulong at napalaya. Sabi sa verse 23, Know ye that your brother, that our brother Timothy is set at liberty. Ibig sabihin si, si Timothy rin ay nakulong because of the gospel and was released. He was set at liberty. With whom? If he comes shortly, I will see you. Now. So it was a time of persecution. Christians were being imprisoned because of their faith in Jesus. Now, this was the book of Hebrews. In other words, this was a letter okay, specifically for the Jews. Okay? Kung baga, ayan yung main na pinagsulatan ng epistle na ito, Hebrews. Pagkat sa panahon nito, ang mga believers ay hindi lamang mga Gentiles but Jews because it started with the Jews. Ang mga unang Christians were Jewish. Pero at 
this time, the Jews had a way of escape from suffering that is not open for the Gentile believers. Ang mga Hudyo during this time, pwede silang makataka sa persecution. There's a way of escape for them from suffering na hindi available sa mga Gentiles. Now, how could the Jewish believers escape suffering? The Jewish believers could get out of trouble by going back to the synagogue. At maral sabi nila, ah, now, anyway, parehas lang naman ang Diyos na sinasamba. Why? Because at that time, Christianity was, Ill Christianity was illegal, but Judaism was still legal. Nang ibig sabihin, yung mga synagogue, they were registered. So, if you are a Jewish believer at nagkakaroon ng persecution, ang isang option mo para matakasan yung suffering is to go back to the synagogue. Okay. Not just for yourself, but to take your families out of the persecution. But if you would study the history, the only way for them to get back into the Jewish synagogue was to publicly deny their faith in Jesus. Sasabihin ng mga religious leader, okay, uh, uh, nabalitaan namin na sumama kayo sa mga so-called Christians na yan. Pero ngayon, gusto niyo nang bumalik. Pero tatanggapin namin kayo on one condition, you have to deny your faith in Jesus. Napakabigat nun. Kaya nga dito, sa Hebrews 6, Apostle Paul talk about the falling away. Sabi niya sa Hebrews 6, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away. To renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put Him to an open shame. Nang ibig sabihin, because of the persecution, may mga Jewish na umanib sa Christianismo dahil hindi nila kaya yung persecution. Pati yung kanilang mga anak pinipersecute sa school. Anong ginawa nila mga kapatid? Bumalik sila sa sinagog but on the condition that they have to deny their faith in Jesus kaya nagkakaroon ng falling away many people were drawing back why? because they could not stand persecution at sabi ni Apostle Paul dito na uh, Sa Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Sabi niya, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, why was Paul uh, saying this? Because a lot of Jews were drawing back. They were leaving their faith. Kaya I think it's 13 times na sinasabi ni Paul dyan, let us, let us go. Let us, uh, let us run this race. Okay? Let us lay aside every weight. Why? Because there are a lot of people that drew back to synagogue, drew back to Judaism because they could not extend persecution. At sabi niya dito, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Kung may mga tao nag draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him. They were once enlightened. Kaya nga dito pinapakita ni Apostle Paul na ang New Testament is better than the Old Testament because this is the reality form. Pinakita niya 
Amen. May mga inaalay sa Old Testament na mga hayop, but Jesus Christ is a better sacrifice. At ano ba balik kayo sa Judaism? Which is inferior? Gusto mo magbumalik sa karag-karag na sasakyan kung naka-Mercedes Benz ka na? Why? Because Jesus, uh, Apostle Paul was showing that Jesus is the better sacrifice. He's better tabernacle. He's better than the angels. He's better than the prophets. Apostle Paul was showing that the substance is better than the shadow. Why you get back to shadow when you have the reality form? Pero mga kapatid, marami pa rin mga Jews because of the persecution, they were drawing back. At sabi ni Apostle Paul, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Verse 39, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. Hallelujah. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Marami mga Amen. Marami mang nag-fall away. Marami mang nag-draw back. Pero hindi kami kasama doon. Because we did not look back. We did not draw back. At alam nyo ba, sa minsay, sa minsay ito, marami mga dati, bibi, dati na nasa minsay, yung mga ibang ministro pa, iniwan ang minsay, and they are now speaking against this message. Yung dating pinaniwalaan nila, yung dating yinakap nila, inuusig na nila. Mara nagkaroon ng falling away dito sa message, pero sinasabi ko sa inyo, hindi tayo kasama doon. Ano man ang sabi nila, this message is vindicated. Ang sabi ni Brother Branham, the message came for preparation, but the pillar of fire came for vindication. I don't need to vindicate this message. The pillar of fire vindicated this message. How can, a, how can God vindicate a liar if they accuse Brother Branham a liar? Naalala nyo ba nang dinidiscuss ni Brother Branham ang Genesis 18? Ang sabi niya, look at Elohim discerning the hearts of Sarah. At sabi niya, that is being repeated now. Sabi niya, why did Sarah laugh? Dinisern niya ang puso ni Sarah. At sabi ng prophet, ito'y nangyayari ngayon. At para patunayan, tumalikod ang prophet at nag-start siyang mag-discern. Now, kung nagsisinungaling siya, mga kapatid, you could not make up that. You, can, you, cannot, you cannot make that up. Amen. Nang ibig sabihin, Amen, ang Diyos mismo bumababa para patunayan na totoo ang sinasabi ng taong ito. But a lot of people, they drew back. Pero mga kapatid, ano mang sabihin nila, kahit libo man ang lumabas sa mensahe, tatayo ang tuwang mensahe. Pagkat dito sa mensahe, dito ko lamang naunawan kung sino ako. Nabuksan ang misteryo ng buhay ko. Eh, I've never known God. Amen. Like in this message. Nawala ang spiritual amnesia ko. I see Jesus and His program. Amen. Kayo nang galing kayo sa iba't ibang denomination. Bakit nyo iniwan ang denomination? Pagkat dito nyo lamang nasilayan ang tunay na liwanag. Dito nyo nalaman ang tunay nyong identity. Amen. Dito yung pinakita sa inyo ang pre-existence nyo that you were in Christ before the foundation of the world. Dito nyo nalaman ang purpose ng Panginoon sa inyong earthly journey at ang inyong eternal destination ipinakita ng Panginoon sa inyo. Mga kapatid, amen. sinasabi ko sa inyo, wala nang mas maliwanag sa minsahe. Pagsamasamay mo na lahat ng theologian sa dinaminasyon at ang kanilang interpretation sa Biblia, walang mas malinaw na paliwanag sa Biblia kung sisabihin sa ito. If they want to leave this message, leave them alone. But we will stand for this message. We believe this message. We will fight for this message. Ano mang sabihin nila, alam ko by my heart, this is the true vindicated message. 
mga kabatid, in the past, the Lord appeared in many forms. Nag-appear siya ng, as a pillar of cloud. Nag-appear siya sa, uh, as a pillar of fire. Nag-appear siya as a dove. Nag-appear siya as a rainbow. Nag-appear siya as the angel of the Lord. At alam niyo ba mga kabatid, lahat ng appearance na ginawa ng Diyos sa past, ginawa niya sa minsan ito. He appears as a pillar of cloud, as a pillar of fire, as a rainbow, as a dove. Mga kabatid, vindicating this message. That's why I don't need to prove this message right. God Himself came down to prove this message right. I know what I'm saying. I see the vindication of God. It's not man vindicating this message. But a lot of people sa panahon na ito, they drew back. They drew back. Now look at this. Ang sabi na Apostle Paul dito, we are not of them who draw back. Ano yan? Unto perdition. Ano ibig perdition? Distraction. Those who do draw back, they drew back to their distraction. Why? Because looking back leads to drawing back. And drawing back is to perdition. As you look back, you waver. You see that? Itong mga hudyo na ito, because of persecution, because of suffering, Maraming yung magulang na, na nakita niyo kanyang anak na inaapi ng mga kalaro niya. Dahil sa kanyang paniniwala kay Jesus, oh, nadisip ka rin pata parang yung nanay mo, tatay mo, nadisip yan. Maraming tinatahuanan. They could not stand that persecution. They could not stand that mocking. Ano na ngayon? Nagkaroon ng falling away. They drew back. Pero mga kapatid, si Apostle Paul, napakaraming sufferings na kanyang hinirap because of the gospel. But Apostle Paul never looked back. Sabi niya, we are not those people that drew back. Ano mang persecution, ano mang kahirapan, amen, magpapatuloy tayo, hindi tayo lilingon pabalik. Amen. Sa 2 Corinthians 11:23 to 33, doon inisaisa ni Apostle Paul ang suffering niya because of the gospel. Ilang beses siya nakulong, hinampas, binato. Di ba? Ang dami niyang mga struggles na pinagdaanan. Nasubukan niyang isinakay sa basket, e eh, dinaan sa window para lamang makatakas. Grabe ang kanyang mga hinirap na persecution. Pero hindi sumagi sa, sa isip ni Apostle Paul na sabi niya, mabuting bumalik na lang ako sa aking pagka-Farisi. Na ako'y Farisi pa. People look up to me. Nire-respeto ako. Makita lamang nila kung binabati ako. Wala akong persecution. Pero anong nangyari sa akin? Amen. When I accepted Christ, ganito na nangyayari sa akin. Pero mga kapatid, si Apostle Paul, amen, he counted it as privilege to be part of the suffering of Christ. Ha? Hindi siya natinag ng kahirapan. Ha? Hindi siya natinag ng trials. Nagpatuloy si Apostle Paul. Ha? At the end of his life, sabi niya, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith and a crown awaits for me. Why? Because Apostle Paul never looked back. Ha? Apostle Paul never looked back. Don't look back. Amen. Grabe ang kanyang suffering. Hindi pa nga siya nag-start sa kanyang ministry nang inutusan ng Panginoon si Ananias para ipanalangin si Apostle Paul anong sabi ng Panginoon kay Ananias. Sabi niya, I will show Paul how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Hindi pa nga nagsimula ng ministry. Sinasabi ng Panginoon, mga great things na kanyang Madada, great, great suffering na kanyang madaranasan. Amen. Pero mga kapatid, si Apostle Paul, hallelujah. Amen. Sabi niya, oh, maraila ko'y pariseyo. 
Amen. Maganda ako yung nag-aral kay Gamaliel, one of the prestigious teacher. Amen. Mata maganda ang aking tungkulin. Nire-respeto ako sa aking dinaminasyon na pinanggalingan. Pero lahat yun ay kinonsider kong basura. I consider all them as dung just to gain Christ. Why? Pagkat nakita ni Apostle Paul ang value ni Kristo. Ano mang mga bagay, mga kapatid na, na ibigay sa akin ng kaaway, ano mang persecution, sabi niya, what can separate me from the love of God? There is no persecution, no trials, no perils, not even that can separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Why Paul never look back? Why? Because Paul has reached the point of no return. Amen. And once you have reached that point of no return, amen, there is no room for backsliding. Why? Amen. When you decided to follow Jesus, there is no turning back. Hindi ka na babalik sa dati. Hindi, hindi ka na babalik sa pinanggalingan mo. Why? Because you want to finish this race. You want to follow Jesus unto the end. Oh my. A man who greatly suffered. You know one of the reasons why you see people drawing back? They could not stand persecution because of the word. They could not stand the test. They drew back. But Paul never drew back in times of suffering and persecution. Now, sintinan nyo sinabi ni Apostle Peter dito sa 2 Peter. Second Peter. Chapter 2. Verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Oh my. Ito yung mga tao, they have escaped the pollution of the world. Pagkat nilabas sila ng Panginoon sa mundo. Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But though they were able to escape the pollution, the defilement of the world, ano nangyari? They are again entangled therein. Naging bihag sila muli ng bagay na kung saan pinalaya na sila ng Panginoon doon. Why? Because they look back. Napalaya na sila sa isang bagay, but they get entangled sa isang bagay na kung saan pinalaya sila ng Panginoon and overcome them. At sabi to, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. At yung latter end nila, mas worse sa beginning. Why? Pagkat sabi ni Jesus Christ, na kapag isang evil spirit ay kinas sa isang tao, okay, at yung spirit na yun, nagahanap ng malilipatan, he walk it in dry places, nagahanap siya ng kanyang lilipatan, nasisidlan, at wala siyang masupungan kapag bumalik siya sa taong doon. At empty pa. Nalinisan na cast out yung demon. Pero wala pang Holy Ghost. Empty. Magsasaba siya ng seven more demons that is more evil than him. Pati mga demonyo, may mas evil pa, no? Itong demonyong ito, mas demonyo ito. Isa sa akin. Kaya ano nangyari? 
the latter end of that person is much worse. Was worse than the beginning. At sabi ni, at sabi ni Peter, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Mas maganda pa na hindi na nila nalaman ang katotohanan. Mas, ma mas maganda pa na hindi na nila nalaman yung way of righteousness kaysa nalaman nila at tinalikuran nila. Hindi sinasabi ni Paul na, na, na Paul is not promoting ignorance. Sinasabi niya that is lesser evil. Mas lesser evil yung hindi mo alam na kasama ang ginagawa mo kaysa yung nalaman mo yung katotohanan pero tinalikuran mo. Mas malaki yung pananagutan mo doon. At sabi ni Peter, But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb, The dog is turned to his own vomit again. Yung proverb na nagsasabi, Yung aso binalikan niya yung kanyang isinuka na. And the soul, ay, Yung soul dyan, pig, baboy, that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. At yung baboy na nalinisan na, hinugasan na, bumalik sa putikan. Mga kabatid, kung isinuka mo na wag kang parang maging aso na babalikan mo pa. Kapag isinuka mo, isinuka mo na yung mga bagay sa mundo, pagkat gusto mong sumunod kay Kristo, wag mo nang balikan mga kabatid. At sabi ito, para sila mga baboy na hinugasan na, pero bumalik sa putigan. Ayan mga kapatid, nahugasan yung baboy, pumunta sa church, nalinisan, naiba yung kanyang pananamit. Diba? Nagiba yung kanyang language. Nahugasan. Pero hindi pa rin nagbago yung nature, baboy pa rin. <laughs> Amen. Kaya bumalik pa rin sa butikan. Mga kapatid, hindi ibig sabihin nagsisimba ka na mga kapatid, okay na yun. You must have a nature change. The Holy Spirit must change your nature, must change your desire. You must die to self. Kasi kahit nandito ka sa simbahan, linggo-linggo ka nagsisimba, kung ang design mo pa rin nasa mundo, darating din ang panahon na babalik ka doon. Pagkat nandito ka, pero ang puso mo nasa mundo. Amen. Pero kapag binago na ng Panginoon ang desire mo, hallelujah, kapag binago na ng Panginoon ang nature mo, ayaw mo nang bumalik sa dati. Why? Pagkat ang desire mo na maglingkod sa Panginoon. Ang desire mo na ay tuparin ang kalooban ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Now, I will give you my last example. Ito sa Luke 17. Luke 17 verse 26. Sabi dyan, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. In the days of the Son of Man. Mga kabatid, our days is like the days of Noah. Get back to Genesis 6 and you will see the condition of Noah. You see, the world was full of evil. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, and they were given in marriage. This is the normal things in life. Diba? They eat, they drank, they get married. They were given in marriage. Ibig sabihin parang wala. Gumising sila, it's just like the usual day. It looks normal. Sabi dyan, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Sabi sa pagkasabi sa Matthew 24, until the flood came and, knew, and they knew it not. 
They knew it not until the flood came. Hindi nila alam. Because it was just an ordinary day for them. As usual, kakain tayo ng almusal. We eat and drink. Oh, kung sino yung kakasal, ikasal. At sabi nila sa Matthew 24, and they knew not. Hindi sila prepared. Hindi nila alam. Layo na pala darating na pala yung judgment. Sinong, uh, and they knew not? Yung mga tao. Pero si Noah, alam niya. Alam niya. Alam niya. Dahil pinapasok na siya ng Panginoon, supernaturally, binasok ng Panginoon yung mga hayop na dapat nandun sa ark. At nakita niya na sinara ng Panginoon yung pintuan. At sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya, pitong araw na lang at ulan na. Alam ni Noah. Pero sila hindi nila alam. Pero alam ni Noah. Why? Because he's receiving a visitation from God. God was dealing with Noah. Yung mga tao, they woke up. Oh, sabi na, it's like an, uh, it's just like uh, uh, the usual day, like an ordinary day. Oh, yung daily routine gawin lang natin. Pero hindi nila alam na yun na palang araw ng hukom para sa kanila. Pero si Noah nakapaghanda. Why? Because he's having experiences with God. He's having visitations from God. Verse 28. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, and they bought. They sold and they planted and they built it. Ganyan nakikita natin ngayon. Araw-araw, may kumak- kumakain na tumidong mga tao. Okay? Bumibili. Nagbebenta, merong trading na nangyayari. Yung iba nagtatanim, yung iba nagbibuild. But thus, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. <laughs> it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Ibig sabihin, they were unaware of what was about to take place. Yeah, they were eating and drinking, you know, as usual. Okay, hindi nila alaw, yun na palang araw, nagugunawin ng Panginoon ng Sodom. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In other words, the revealing of the Son of Man is as it was in the days of Sodom. Are we in the days of Sodom? Have we seen the revealing of the Son of Man? In the days like Sodom. In that day, he which shall be upon the house stuff, and is his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Ibig sabihin, in that day. In the day of judgment, there must be an urgency. Okay? Hindi na kung nandun ka sa house tap, babalikan mo pa yung gamit mo. No! You have to escape for your life. There's an urgency for it. At sabi sa verse 32, Remember Lot's wife. Oh my. Jesus is the only person in the Bible that preached about Lot's wife. At kapag sinabi niya, Remember, Important yun. Because Jesus here is talking about judgment. As it was in the days of Noah. As it was in the days of Lot. Pinapakita dito ang two kinds of judgment. One is water and one by fire. But it is promised in this age that God would destroy this world by fire. And when Jesus was talking about judgment, He gave a stern warning. Nagbigay siya ng warning at sabi niya, Remember Lot's wife. <laughs> Alalahanin yung asawa ni Lot. Napaganda siguro, alalahanin natin ngayon. Tinan natin sa Genesis 19. Genesis 19. Start na lang sa verse 12. Dahil familiar naman tayo sa kwento. 
Genesis 19, verse 12. And the men, which are the two angels, and the man said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides? Son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. Meron ka pa dito na mga son-in-law, mga anak na laki o anak babae, or whatsoever you have in this city, mga mahal mo sa buhay, bring them out of this place. Nang ibig sabihin, if you want them to be saved, bring them out of Sodom. Bring them out of Sodom condition. Bring them out of this place. Because God was about to destroy Sodom. At sabi sa verse 13, For we will destroy this place. So the men, those two angels, were revealing to Lot their intention of coming. For we will destroy this place. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. Kaya kung meron kang son-in-law, o mga anak, o kung sino paman, ilabas mo sa Sodom. Pagkat we are commissioned to destroy this place because of the wickedness. In other words, this place is ripe for judgment. Their cup of iniquity is already full. In verse 14, And Lot went out and he spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up! Get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. So, nilapitan niyang una yung kanyang mga son-in-law. Sons-in-law. Sabi niya, magmanali kayo. Lumabas kayo sa lugar na ito. Pagkat sisirain ng Diyos ang lugar na ito. Anong reaksyon ng mga sanilo? Umiti lang sila, tinawana sila. Why? Because Lot has destroyed this testimony. Wala nang influence yung kanyang salita. Ikaw naman, Lot. Ikaw naman, ikaw naman tay. Ba't ka ganyan magsalita? Kahapon lang, tinatanong, tinatanong mo sa akin, sa akin kung anong lumabas sa Loto eh. O sinong nanalo sa basketball? Katapos, ito na naman, pinag-uusapan natin, judgment. Parang naiba ka naman ngayon. <laughs> ano sa, a, 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 anong gusto mo? Tatawa kami? Ano, ano, ano mag-joke yan? Tinatakot mo ba kami? Hindi e, naniwala yung kanyang mga sanin-lo. Kaya yan, mahirap na kami. Once you destroyed your testimony, wala nang influence kahit anong sabihin mo. Mga if you want your life to have influence, live a godly example. Hallelujah! Magiging example ka sa iyong mga anak. Magiging example ka sa mga katrabaho mo, mga kapatid. If you want your word to have an influence, maray mga so-called Christian, wala na silang influence pagkat alam na mga tao ang ginagawa nila sa labas. Pagdating nila sa church, para silang banal, para silang holy, yak-iyak pa, tumatalon pa, pero pag nasa labas, they compromise with the world and you try to witness to them, you no longer have a testimony. No influence. Now, verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angel hastened Lot. You understand that word, hasten? Minadali nila si Lot. Then the angel hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Wag mo na kaya, kaya mo na mga sasilo mo, tinatawanan ka lang. Sabi ng mga angels, magmadali ka na Lot. Kunin mo na ang iyong asawa, ang iyong dalawang anak na babae, at lumabas na kayo dito. Because the Lord will consume this place because of their iniquity. What was the reaction of Lot? And while he lingered, naglinger 
Pinagmamadali siya. Pinagmamadali siya ng anghel. Naglingga siya, dinidelay niya, nagre-relax pa lang siya. There was no prompt action. Why? Because Lot was in a lukewarm condition. He was desensitized by the things of Sodom. Sabi ng anghel, magmadali ka na! Pero, si Lot, he lingered. Hindi siya nagmamadali. Parang walang urgency kang nakikita kay Lot. Now, how many times the angel in this pulpit would speak to you with such urgency? The angel in the pulpit would speak to you the word of God and you just sit there and linger? Na para bagang, you are unmoved. Pero minamadali ka na. Amen, sinasabi ng angel of the Lord, you must prepare. Be desperate or perish. Or you must apply the token or die. Pero nandiyan ka lang, nag-relax ka lang, linger ka, hiyaan mo lang. Sinasabi lang naman ni Pastor Yana. But you don't realize, amen, that the angel of the Lord is speaking to the angel of the pulpit and giving warning to the people at nandiyan ka lang because of your lukewarm condition. Hallelujah! You are unmoved. You lingered. I've seen people like that. Amen. You see your pastor crying at the top of his voice. Amen. Warning the people. But they are unmoved. They lingered. There was no quick response because they've been desensitized by the things of the world. And while he lingered, the man laid hold upon his sin and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. At habang naglilinger si Lot, hindi siya makapag-decide. Oy, yes. Asawa, pinapalabas na tayo ni ano ni 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 ng mga na tong dalawang bisita natin, labas na raw tayo dito. Sandali lang, talaga ayos pa ako ng buhok. Hindi ko pa nalagay yung ano ko, eyelashes ko eh. Hindi pa nga ako nakapag-makeup, nakapag-lipstick tapos mamadali ka. Haya! Bis mo muna ako. <laughs> Naglinger. Pero yung mercy ng Diyos anong ginawa nila? nakita ng angel na naglilinggar sila, kinuha na yung kanilang kamay, yung kamay ni Lot, yung kamay ng asawa niya, at yung kanyang dalawang, hinatak na sila ng anghel papalabas. Sometimes, when you hear the angel of the pulpit is speaking to you, naglilinggar ka pa, pero nadadama mo kami sa nina, hatak ka na ng Panginoon, hinihila ka na ng Panginoon, pagkat nice ka ng Panginoon, nabaligtas. Ayo, when you hear that gospel, harden not your heart. Don't be like Lot. Bakat si Lot ay lukewarm. Kaya kung anong narinig niya minsay, he may, he, he, he may light of it. Oh, uh, si pastor, uh, ganyan lang yan kapag nangangaral. Parang nagagalit yan si pastor. Mga kapatid, nagwa-warning ang angel. Amen. Kailanman hindi nagkulang ang anghel na mag-warning dito sa pulpit ho. Hallelujah. Amen. Kung ikaw, amen, ay na, ikaw ay namumuhay pa sa kasalanan, sinasabi ko, ang pulpitong ito, hindi nagkulang na mag-warning. And when you hear the warning of God, you better respond quickly. If you try to linger, you are just showing your condition. You are in a lukewarm condition. Hindi na na sila ng mga anghel. Ayan, kumisan, parilax-relax ka lang dyan. Kumisan, ang preaching, nakikita mo, parang hinihila ka na. That's the grace of God. Amen. Biyaya ng Diyos. Kaya mga kapatid, kung kinokorek ka ng Panginoon, masaya ka. Pagkat biyaya yan ng Diyos. Kung nasa kasalanan ka, hinihila ka na palabas. 
dapat masaya ka. Why? Pagkat ayan ay pag-ibig ng Diyos. That's the love of God. That's the hand of God drawing you out from that condition. Mga kapatid, kung ako'y pastor, hindi ko kayo mahal. Hindi ko sasabihin yung tama. Sabi ko, sabi ko, hindi ko na i-review yung mga tao. Ma-offend lang sila sa akin. Mabuti ng maraming kaibigan. Mga kapatid, hindi yan ang intention ko sa pagpapastor. Ako'y tinawag ng Panginoon para ipangaral ang buhong katotohanan. Masaktan ang masaktan. Amen. Maplis ko lamang ang Panginoon. Hallelujah! Ang sabi ko sa Panginoon, kapag ako'y nananalaki, Panginoon, kung meron akong achievement sa ministry na ito, ay makita ko lamang yung mga tao to be drawn close to you. That's enough for me na magkaroon sila ng malapit na relasyon sa iyo. That's my aim in this ministry, not to push you away from God, but to draw you close to God. That could be the crowning of my ministry. Na yung mga dating malamig, yung mga dating malayo sa Diyos, ay lumalapit sa Diyos. Yung mga dating namumuhay sa kasalanan, iniwan ang kasalanan. Dahil sila ay tinawag ng Diyos, tumugon sa tawag ng Diyos. Amen. It's not my aim to be popular. My aim, mga kapatid, is to draw people to Christ. Amen. Now look at this. Hinila na sila. And it came to pass, verse 17, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee. Ibig sabihin, don't look back. Neither is they thou in all the plain escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed. Itong gusto ko sa mga anghel na ito. Because they don't only preach about judgment, they also show the people the way of escape. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We don't just preach judgment here. We don't just warn people here. We show them the way of escape. Hallelujah. We show them the right path. Nakalabas na sila. Hindi na sila palabas ng anghel. Wala na sila sa Sodom. At anong sabi ng anghel? Escape for your life. Kaya mga kapatid, don't be so secured. Na sabi, wala na ako sa Sodom, wala na ako sa mundo, wala na ako sa Egypt. Don't be so secured. Amen. Hindi ibig sabihin, wala ka na sa Sodom, wala ka na sa mundo, lumabas ka na sa mundo, ay ligtas ka na. No! You have to come to God's provided place. You have to come to Christ. Pastor, secured na ako. Bakit? Lumabas na ako sa denominasyon. Nandito na ako sa mensahe. Wala na ako sa Egypt. Wala na ako sa Sodom. Lumabas na ako sa Sodom. Mga kapatid, yung asawa ni Lot, lumabas din sa Sodom. Kaya wag mong sasabihin sa akin yan. Hallelujah. Amen. Bagamat lumabas ka sa Sodom, you must go to the place of safety. And there's only one place of safety. And that is in Christ Jesus. Kahit nandito ka pa sa mensahe 20 years, kahit 25 years, you have to run to Christ. Amen. Walang assurance na nasa mensahe ka, mararapture ka. Walang assurance na ikaw iligtas. Kahit lumabas ka sa sudo, mga kabatid, if you are not in the place of safety, you'll die and perish. Kaya don't be, don't, don't, don't have a false security. Oh, I'm sitting under the right church, under the right ministry. I'm in the message. I left the organization. Denominations are false. And I'm in the right channel. Then you feel secured? Mga kapatid, maraming lumabas sa Egypt, nakalabas sila sa Egypt, but they all perish in the wilderness. Yung mga nag-provoke sa Panginoon, they provoked ten times, they could not believe the promise. They always murmured. Mga kapatid, Jesus doesn't just warn us in this pulpit. He shows us the way of escape. Amen. Matapos tayo warningan ng Panginoon, sinasabi niya ang dapat nating gawin para tayo maihanda. 
Now, I have to skip some verses here. Eh, guys, ayaw ko daan ang lahat, baka may preach ko. Because I'm, 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 I'm thinking next Sunday, I'll preach about Lot. So, kaya ko munang uh, masyadong itouch si Lot. Pag-usapan lang natin muna yung asawa niya. Okay lang ba? Asawa ni Lot. Sabi ng angel, don't look behind. Don't look back. Now, Verse 23. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. So, pinakita na kapasok sa Zoar. Then the Lord reigned. Pero, yung asawa ni Lot, he was, uh, she was behind Lot. Hindi siya nakapasok doon sa Zoar. Okay. Then the Lord reigned upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he offered through those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that, and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Mga kabatid, don't look back. Jesus is giving a stern warning here. Amen. Marahil naalala ni ni ano, naku, marami ako mga properties doon. Marami ako, ma- may posisyon ako doon, nandun yung mga kaibigan ko. Paano na yung mga kamadyong ko doon, naiwanan ko na sila. May laro pa kami ngayon. <laughs> oh ako pa naman ang, uh, yung uh, asawa ko, mayor. Sino ba itong dalawang taong ito na nagbibigay instruction sa amin? Dito tumatakbo kami na para makasira ulo. I'm not a fool. I could not place my life in the hand of this man. Sino lang sa mga sasabihin niya na huwag kaming lilingon? Hindi ako ganyan na tao. Mga kabatid, she disobeyed the word of the angel. She has the ministry of the angel, but she could not believe the words of the angels. Kaya mga kabatid, you are under the ministry of an angel. Hallelujah! Amen! Ang sabi ni Brother Branham, yung angel in the pulpit, mas greater sa angel sa langit. Kaya sabi ni Apostle Paul, kung merong mga anghel sa langit na mangaral, nang iba sa'y pinangaral na namin sa inyo, let him be a curse. At sabi ng prophet, who is greater, the angel in heaven or the angel in the pulpit? Sabi niya, greater yung angel in the pulpit. Kasi kung mayroon silang ipinangaral, may bumabang anghel, ibang pinangaral, let him be a curse. Mga kapatid, why? Because God speaks through the angel of the church. The angel of the age is the prophet, but the angel of a local assembly is the pastor. They have a divine authority from God, not from a Bible school, not from men, not from a seminary. They have a God-given authority. And when they warn the people, that's the angel giving warning to you. And you better listen. Don't linger. Sino ba yung pastor na yan? Bakit ko pakikinggan? Mas mataas ang po. Mas mataas ang edukasyon ko sa iyo dyan. Hindi niya alam kung sino ako. Taas na ang posisyon ko sa kumpanya. Kung may maara ko ng mga negosyo, wala akong pakialam mga kapatid. Amen. Pero ang alam ko mga kapatid, ang anghel ng Panginoon na narito is speaking to the angel in the pulpit. To warn the people of God. Para kapag nangyari ang paghagaw, wala kayong pwedeng isumbat sa Panginoon. Panginoon, hindi mo kayo may pinalalahanan. Sasabihin ng Panginoon, ilang beses ko kayo pinalalahanan, pero matigas ang iyong puso. She couldn't believe the angel of the Lord. Dalawang anghel yung nang- nangaral sa kanya. They were in the presence of the angels. Kaya nga sabi ko last Sunday, baging sa panahon ni Father Branham, 
Nandun yung angel of the Lord. Nangangaral si Barbara at the top of his voice. Pero yung mga tao, they make light of the preaching. They just sit there. Amen. Kapag kuminsan nadadaanan ni Brother Branham, yung tatamang pananamit, yung holiness, some women will walk out the, 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 the building. Nagdadabog pa sila. Look at that. They could do that in the presence of the angel. The angel was moving. Kaya ano nangyari dyan? Because she disbelieved the word of the angel, she became a pillar of salt. What was that? That was God's judgment for disbelieving the word of the angel. She was judged. Why? Kaya binibigyan tayo ng warning ng Panginoon. Sabi niya, remember Lot's wife. Hallelujah! Itong asawa ni Lot, nakarinig siya ng tinig mula sa anghel. Amen! Na, 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 nabigyan siya ng warning. Sinabi ng anghel, don't look back! At ngayon sinasabi ng angel of the pulpit, don't look back! The same angel, amen, amen, the same, the same message na sinabi ng anghel sa asawa ni Lot. Amen! Akin na Lot, sinasabi ngayon sa atin, don't look back! Don't look back! Mga young people, Don't look back. Malakas ang hatang ng mundo ngayon. Nandiyan ang fashion of the world. Nandiyan ang mga pollution sa mundo. Nandiyan ang filthiness sa, 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 sa media. Nandiyan lahat ng basura. Ma-access mo sa internet. Pero mga kabatid, kung iniwan mo ng mundo, huwag mo nang balikan yung mga basura na yon. Don't look back. Magpatuloy kang lumakad sa katwiran ng Panginoon. There's no time to play church. This is a time of judgment, mga kabatid. Hallelujah. You have to run for the place of safety. Huwag kang maging secure. Tatay ko message believer, nanay ko message believer, kapatid ko message believer, kapatid ko pastor, mga kabatid, hindi na kukuha dyan. You've got to have a personal relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. Mga kabatid, lahat ng yan people, say amen. Amen. Don't look back. Hinihila ka ng yung mga kaklase, peer pressure, o na magdroga, o na mga manood na mga karumal-dumal na mga movies. Mga kapatid, huwag mong balikan yan pagkat pinalaya ka na ng Panginoon sa ganong klaseng kasalanan. Hallelujah! It was a glad day when I was born again. The things I used to do, I don't do them no more. Don't look back. Do you see the time we are in? Hallelujah. Amen. Nang 1964, nang umakit ang prophet sa bundok, kasama yung si Buckwood, sabi ng angel sa kanya, pick up the trap and throw it in the air. Tinapon ng prophet, bumagsak sa lupa. Sabi ng prophet, God is fixing to do something. The next day, bumaba ang Panginoon na form of verbal, nagkaroon ng blast doon sa bundok. At sabi ng angel of the Lord, Amen, judgment is striking the earth. It will start in the West Coast. And 27 days later, later, amen, Alaska almost sunk in a 9.2 in a richer scale. Kaya, since then, mga kapatid, tuloy-tuloy ang natural disaster. Why? It's a time of judgment. We are between the amateur judgment and the great tribulation. Tama ba? But before the great tribulation strikes, there's a way of escape. You better run, amen, to the refuge, to the place of safety. Mga kabatid, wala nang place of safety ngayon. Yung mga bomb shelter niya sa Middle East, hindi niya place of safety. The only place of safety is in Christ Jesus. Look at that. The prophet preaching. The angel of the Lord was there. And the angel of the pulpit was there. The heavenly and the earthly angel. Amen. But people make light of the message. Pumasok dito, lumabas doon. He preached the token, sabi niya, apply the token or die. He preached the message, desperation, I'm a bit desperate or perish. But there are some people, they are unshaken by the message. Look at the time we are in now. Natinuro ng prophet yung birth pain. Nag-stack yung dalawang page ng kanyang 
Biblia, hindi niya mahanap yung kanyang text. May pari na nag-abot sa kanya ng Biblia. Una, hindi niya maunawaan kung bakit yun. Katapos, meron siyang tinig na narinig. Pinaalala yung sa Book of Luke. Nang si Christ hinan sa kanya yung Book of Isaiah, scroll lang, yung uh, scroll of Prophet Isaiah ng pare, binasa niya sa Isaiah. The Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord is, uh, has, a, has come upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel. To give sight to the blind and so on. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Pero pinutol yung day of vengeance. Kaya nang inabot, na-realize siya, nang inabot sa kanya ng pari yung book. This is now the day of vengeance. Kaya 1963, lumabang yung mystery cloud. What is that? That is the supreme judge. Remember Lot's wife. Amen. She was... She disbelieved the message of the angel. And the Lord judged her. Alam ng Panginoon lahat, alam ng Panginoon lahat ng pangalan ng tao, tama ba? Pero hindi niya ka pinangalanan eh. Sinabi niya lang, remember Lot's wife. Eh, hindi niya man lang sinabi yung pangalan niya. Dulto alam niya, pangalan ng asawa ni Lot. Hindi ko rin alam pangalan ng asawa ni Lot, di binanggit ni Jesus. Pero kung ano man ang pangalan ng asawa ni Lot, that name was blotted out from the book of life. Sa dami-dami ng pwedeng i-pick up ni Christ, pwede niyang i-pick up, sabi niya, remember Noah or remember Abraham, or remember Sarah. Pero ang pinikap niya, remember Lot, Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. Maganda sana, sabi niya, remember Sarah. But Jesus was sealing the seventh seal. Hallelujah! Tinatago niya yung mystery ng seventh seal. Amen! Pagkat yung mystery ng seventh seal, nandoon kay Sarah! Hallelujah! Kung merong Lot's wife, merong Abraham's wife, Hallelujah! Kung si, si Lot's wife, she was turned into a pillar of salt. Si Sarah, she was turned into a young woman. Nakaroon siya ng body change. The mystery of the seventh seal is in Sarah. Si, mga kapatid, yung asawa ni Lot, hindi siya nagkaroon ng bagong pangalan. Amen. Pero si Sarah, Amen. Sabi ng Paulo kay Abraham, you don't, yeah, wag mo na siyang tawagin na Sarah. Tawagin mo siyang Sarah. Nilagay yung H. At yung H ay bahagi ng pangalan ng Diyos. Sa Hebrew, you could not utter that words without outbreathing. You say, that's H, mga kabatid. Nang ibig sabihin, God is giving a part of Himself. Amen. That's the mystery of the seven seal. May mga tao, sila si Lot's wife, hindi sila nakinig sa warning. Pero meron ding babae na nagkaroon siya ng body change, na nagkaroon siya ng new name. From Sarai to Sarah. Tinanggal ng Panginoon yung ay, 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 ay. Why? Pagkat mga kabatid, kinakailangan matanggal yung self-will mo at ilagay ni Kristo ang kanyang nature sa iyo. Hallelujah. Lot's wife turned into a pillar so salt. Amen. But Sarah turned back young. <laughs> Amen. That's the mystery of that. At si Jesus, hindi niya binanggit yon. Why? Because he is hiding the mystery of the seventh seal. Pagkat sa senaryo na yon, nakita natin yung supreme judge bumaba na. Amen. Ni-reveal niya kay Abraham yung kanyang gagawin. Si Abraham was partaking of the hidden manna. What's the hidden manna? Ang sabi ni Panginoon, Panginoon, itatago ko ba kay Abraham yung bagay na aking gagawin? Amen. Ang ibig sabihin yung hidden manna, ni-reveal niya kay Abraham. Si Abraham, nagkaroon siya ng circumcision. Nagkaroon siya ng new name. Si Sarah, nagkaroon siya ng new name. At nagkaroon sila ng body change. Dumating yung supreme judge. Shall the God, shall the judge of all the earth do right? Have you seen the supreme judge 1963? Have you seen the coming of the supreme judge? Salamat sa Panginoon mga kabatid. Amen. There's a mystery. Anong ginawa ng Panginoon kay Sarah mga kabatid? Pagkat nandoon pa siya sa humanistic realm, Sarah needed a visitation from God. At nang bumisita ang Panginoon kay Abraham, ang sabi niya, Where is thy wife Sarah? 
Hindi niya tinawag by the old name. Sarai? No! Sarah! Where is thy wife Sarah? Nang tumawa si Sarah, mga kapatid, sabi ng Panginoon, why did Sarah laugh? What was that, mga kapatid? Dinidiscern ng Panginoon. Dininay ni Sarah. Oh, sabi niya, tumawa siya. Tumawa ka. Amen. At sabi ng Panginoon, is there anything hard for the Lord? What was that, mga kapatid? Mga kapatid, nang binitawan yun ng Panginoon, mga kapatid, there's something happened kay Sarah when Elohim left that place. Amen. Si Sarah, mga kapatid, from doubt, he was raised into faith. Kaya sabi sa book of Hebrews that Sarah received strength to conceive and he judged him faithful who gave the promise. Amen. At anong ginagawa ng Panginoon sa ating mga kapatid? Nililift up niya yung faith natin. Is there anything hard for the Lord? Sabi ng prophet, we are the super church, the super race, the invincible army. Parang imposible yan. Is there anything hard from the Lord? Kung sinabi yan ng propeta para sa inyo, magyayari yan. Amen. Maliwala lamang tayo mga kapatid. Amen. Tayo si Sarah, we receive a new name. Hallelujah. We had our new birth and we, and we will turn back young. One is judgment, one is redemption. We see redemption and judgment. But God has given us a stern warning. Remember Lot's wife. Because God doesn't want us to look back. Mga kapatid, don't look back. Don't look back. No one that looks back is fit for the kingdom. May pagsubok na dumating sa iyong buhay, don't look back. Merong hardship na dumating sa iyong buhay, difficulties. You are in a difficult situation. Don't look back. May mabigat ka ngayon na dinadala, may mabigat kayo na suliranin. Don't look back. Why? Pagkat si, pagkat si, yung asawa ni Lot, bagamat siya lumabas, yung puso niya nandun pa rin sa Sodom. Kaya, lumingon siya. Mga kapatid, anumang mangyari sa atin, wala na tayong lilingunin, iniwan na natin yan. Leaving those things that are behind, let us press towards the the, the high mark of our calling in Christ. Amen. Don't look back. Don't look back. Huwag tayo maging mga Jews na yon. Because of persecution, they drew back. Sabi ni Paul, we are not of them that drew back. Mga kabatid, mahal natin itong minsahe. Mahal natin ang ministry na binigay ng Panginoon sa atin. What does God want from us? God wants total commitment, total dedication. God doesn't want half-hearted commitment. Amen. If you want to follow Him, make Him your first priority. And you are fit for the kingdom. Bagamat malakas ang hatak ng mundo, napakaraming attraction sa mundo, mga kapatid, don't look back. Pinalaya ka na ng Panginoon sa biyag ng kasalanan, huwag mo nang babalikan. Magpatuloy tayo, mga kapatid. Mahal tayo ng anghel ng Panginoon. The angel of the Lord is healed. He loves us. How do I know He loves us? He always gives us His warning. He doesn't only show what's the judgment that's coming, He also shows the way of escape. Mga kapatid, you've been taught how to prepare. Kaya salamat sa Panginoon. Amen. Don't be like Lot. After hearing, matapos siyang mina na dali ng anghel, He still lingered. And I believe that the angel of the Lord is always here. He loves us. Nais ng Panginoon pag nag-rapture, handa tayo mga kapatid.
This message is for our preparation. This message is not, is not to, make, to make you a, a bunch of theologians na magdebate tayo paramihan ng quotes, hindi ganyan. Hindi ayan, hindi, hindi ayan ang dahilan kaya binigay ng Panginoon mensahe para magparunungan tayo. Ibinigay itong mensahe para mabago ka. So this message would have an influence in your life, an impact in your life. How does this message influence you? How does this message influence your walk with God every day? Do you love Him? Could you say what Ruth said? Wheresoever thou go, I go. Wheresoever thou lodge, I lodge. Walang pwedeng makapagpigil sa akin. Why? Because I have made a clear-cut decision. There's a great falling away. Pero hindi tayo bahagi ng falling away na yun. May I call all the musicians. Don't look back. Tayo po lahat ay tumayo. God is looking for people. who could give God the first place in their life. God is calling for people who are willing to pay the price. Sabi ng isa, Lord, I would go wheresoever thou goest. But Jesus answered, Well, do you know the cost in following me? Are you willing to pay the price? Have you reached the point in your life you could say, I'm already at the point of no return. And ano man ang aking daanan sa buhay, ano man pagsubok pag dumating, never na akong lilingon. I have put my hand on the plow, I won't leave that. Let us sing this song, The Point of No Return.